Well, again, I wouldn't want to question the motives of the administration of the president at this point. Uh, it may very well be that, but I, I, I don't want to question that. But I do feel that in the long run, it would be much better to grapple with the problem from the causal source than to uh, make a few appointments here and there that may appease uh, Negroes generally and make them feel that a great job is being done, when at bottom it, it's, the problem is still there. This becomes little more than a sort of uh, uh, tranquilizing approach that removes the emotional stress for a moment, uh, but doesn't really get at the basic ill. Many people talk about how Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. struggled for civil rights and justice for black people. However, a lot of them don't know his thoughts and opinions about Negro discontent, his proposals, civil rights, and what he thought about the administration. He was fighting at a time when nobody could think of speaking. Yet he too had to be cautious and fight the system. But doing so needed following the rules of the system. How intelligently he did so is remarkable. But what he wanted from black people and what he unknowingly predicted about the future administrations. His words today hold the same power and energy as they held back in June 1963 during his interview with David Susskind. Welcome to a new episode of Black Culture Diary, a channel where we talk about less known and hidden black history, culture, arts, and lost civilization. We scrutinize history here to bring the black culture back on the surface again. We would like to thank you, the members of our community, who have been watching our videos and supporting us. For those who are new, we encourage you to join our community in supporting and building a strong black history education medium. In this episode, we will tell you what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said back in 1963, which still applies to this day. Let's get started. During his conversation with David Susskind in 1963, Martin Luther King's opinions about black people, inequality, injustice, and freedom had fully ripened. He knew what he had to do because it was the same year he was sent to Birmingham jail. During his imprisonment period, he had also written his famous letter which contained the precious words, nobody can forget. Freedom is never given voluntarily by the oppressor. During the interview, Dr. Martin Luther King's words revealed his deep concern for the state of discontent among African-Americans in America. He noticed a growing frustration and impatience within the black community. Unlike anything he had witnessed before, people were becoming increasingly determined and resolute, with a firm belief that justice and freedom were essential and non-negotiable goals. He stressed that the era of token gestures and gradual change had passed. Despite equal rights being guaranteed by both the Constitution and a higher power, they had not been fully realized, leaving the African-American population disappointed and disillusioned. The landmark Supreme Court decision in 1954 meant to usher in integration, moved at a painfully slow pace, with only about 1% of students being integrated each year in the South. The situation outside the South wasn't any better, as de facto segregation continued to gain ground daily. The presence of ghettos and the resulting economic and social isolation fueled discontent within the black community. When asked about the potential for violence overshadowing the nonviolent movement, Dr. King acknowledged the harsh reality. He feared that without accelerated progress and the breakdown of segregation and discrimination, some individuals might resort to violence out of frustration and despair. You see, he said the truth because world history has revealed that whenever a nation is suppressed, it leads to violence. People cannot live like animals who would go wherever the government wants and do whatever the government says. Hence, he emphasized the urgency of supporting nonviolent efforts to prevent extremist groups from gaining momentum. Regarding the proposed civil rights legislation, Dr. King expressed hope that it would be robust and effective. He highlighted the importance of a public accommodations bill, which would ban discrimination in businesses engaged in interstate commerce, significantly impacting the end of segregation in the South. Additionally, he urged measures to expedite the process of public school integration. Whatever he was saying was immediately needed to avoid anarchy. But his words were not listened to and within a few years, time proved he was right about everything he had said. However, despite the potential strength of the proposed civil rights bill, Dr. King wasn't optimistic about its passage without substantial moral and creative pressure. 
He called on the president to go beyond issuing calls and recommendations, suggesting that direct engagement with the public, such as through fireside chats, could foster awareness and garner support for the legislation. Dr. Martin Luther King genuinely cared about addressing the growing discontent and frustration within the African-American community due to the sluggish progress in achieving civil rights. He was not an opportunist who wanted his own goals to be achieved, no matter what happened in the country. Rather, he wanted collective peace. He did not want anarchy to prevail in the society, but this was not an excuse to keep marginalizing the African-American population. He highlighted the need for prompt action, support for nonviolent methods, and effective legislation to prevent further bitterness and the potential for violence. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s thoughts and concerns continue to hold immense relevance in today's world. Despite the passage of time, the issues he highlighted persist and resonate deeply with the ongoing struggles for justice and equality. It's because even today in the United States, marginalized communities, particularly African Americans, still grapple with frustration and impatience due to the sluggish progress toward equality. Black people still face racism in various state departments, from law enforcement to the Justice Department. More black people are arrested and punished than white people. Reports also show that black people are five times more likely to be stopped by police than white people. Today, despite legal guarantees, equal rights are still not fully realized, resulting in disparities and systemic barriers for marginalized groups. Even though legal segregation may have ended, de facto segregation and the existence of disadvantaged communities continue to impact African Americans and other minorities. Dr. King's warning about the potential for violence due to slow progress and persistent barriers remains true as we witness social unrest and protests fueled by feelings of discontent and injustice. Nonviolent approaches to address societal issues remain vital, with peaceful protests and movements continuously striving for justice. The urgency of strong civil rights legislation persists to effectively combat discrimination and segregation. Dr. King's call for strong leadership and moral pressure to drive change remains relevant today. Leaders must mobilize the public to support just causes and advocate for the necessary legislation to bring about the much needed transformation in our society. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. During his discussion, Dr. Martin Luther King expressed his strong belief in the necessity for robust action to advance civil rights in America. Don't forget, it was 1963. He believed that the president should actively engage in conferences with congressmen to persuade them to pass significant civil rights legislation. Dr. King also put forth the idea that the president should connect with various groups across the country to create a sense of concern about civil rights issues, urging people to write to their representatives. You can understand how genius pieces of advice he has had instead of easily resorting to violence. He emphasized that both civil rights leaders and individuals from the African-American and white communities should take decisive action. As part of his proposal for change, Dr. King even suggested the idea of an interracial march on Washington, aiming to demand just laws that would bring the American dream closer to reality. It's quite pleasing to know that now, this is a reality. More people support anti-racism and join the efforts against structural discrimination. When it came to the president's use of moral persuasion, Dr. King acknowledged that while President Kennedy had taken some significant steps for civil rights and was fundamentally a man of goodwill, yet he had not fully lived up to his campaign promises. Perhaps that's the case with every president of the United States to this day. At that time, King said that the president had yet to provide the level of leadership that the civil rights issue demanded, and he had not yet called for meaningful civil rights legislation. Dr. Martin Luther King was sitting in the highest chair nobody had sat on earlier. He was leading the African-American community, and his words held absolute power. Whatever he would say was a de facto order for everyone to follow. Yet he chose to be careful and not go against anyone. He knew that even if the President of the United States was not racist, the entire U.S. administration could not be considered the same. Racism had gone into its roots, yet it could not be directly confronted. Otherwise, an air of hostility would erupt. Therefore, he had to go with a genius approach that was to gradually mold the administration, using the same rules the administration wanted. It was difficult, but Martin Luther King knew how to do it. 
In this conversation, Dr. Martin Luther King shared his thoughts on the urgent need for strong action to advance civil rights in America. He chose not to question the motives of the administration and the president, instead focusing on addressing the root cause of the problem. He firmly believed that superficial appointments would not suffice as they might temporarily appease African Americans without addressing the fundamental issues at hand. Dr. King criticized such an approach, considering it merely a tranquilizing measure that didn't effectively address the underlying problem. The sad reality is, this is the case to this day. Instead of creating an air of equality, the administration still uses superficial stunts to appease African Americans. This can be seen in the administration itself, where one secretary has to be black. In every movie created by Hollywood, there has to be someone black. However, the administration does not want to remove racism from departments. Instead, it was to pass the time by pretending that there is no racism. The interviewer then brought up the topic of threats Dr. King faced and wondered if his survival could be considered miraculous or a sign of negative progress. Dr. King acknowledged the persistent threats he received daily, especially during significant movements like the one in Birmingham. Despite not having personal protection, he found strength in his faith, believing his safety was in the grace of God. He remained resolute in his morally right course of action, undeterred by the risks he faced. Regarding political parties and civil rights, Dr. King criticized both parties for betraying the cause of justice. While acknowledging that African Americans often supported the Democratic Party, he recognized that certain Southern Democrats created obstacles in passing meaningful civil rights legislation. What do you think about Martin Luther King and how he handled situations prudently? Do you agree with his nonviolent struggles? Let us know your take on the fact that his opinions are still relevant to this day, even after 60 years. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching and until the next video, stay tuned.